Well, hello everybody. This is Dr. Radke from the Grace Recovery Church and the Buffalo Valley Counseling Center. It's so good to be with you. Happy holidays. Merry Christmas to you. And I pray that you have a happy and a prosperous new year. It's coming up. Certainly uh, 2021 will go down as one of the most difficult years in the history of mankind, especially in the United States, but also the world because of COVID-19. And uh, Lord, uh, you have tr truly taught us some things about that, haven't you? God has been so good uh, to our family. We have been very thankful that we've pretty much been healthy. Um, my in-laws, Butch and Joyce Clemens, uh, recently had COVID, but they are now past the COVID, and uh, they were able to recover through it. And we're so thankful to God that they were able to get through it. However, one of their good friends, unfortunately, uh, got it more severe because they had a lung, a lung disorder, and uh, it attacked their lungs, and uh, this gentleman, who was a Christian, passed away. And so we're so sorry to hear that. And, uh, but COVID-19 has changed our lives, hasn't it? And uh, I think that depression is up. It is an all-time uh, high. People are having more anxiety. People are worried more. I'm, I'm sure because of this, um, uh, addiction is up. Uh, people are turning to their addictions to deal with the stresses in their life. And, of course, that always is the case when we look at the statistics. When there's more stress and more controversy in the world, uh, it increases the addiction rate as well. Well, we're here to encourage you, to bless you today, and I'm sorry I haven't been with you. I've been extremely busy, and uh, as you know, uh, we've shared with you before, my wife and I, Celeste and I, are uh, parenting our little grandson. His name is Cade uh, Radke, and he is now two and three quarters of a year old. Uh, he will be having a birthday pretty soon. He'll be three soon, hard to believe. But he is such a joy, and uh, of course we're looking forward to Christmas with him because he'll really enjoy it and really understanding all the things that go along with Christmas. And I hope that your family is going to have a wonderful and a blessed Christmas in spite of all the stress that we're under today. Some of us uh, are dealing with COVID right now in our own families or immediate families, and uh, Christmas is not the same. Uh, it was even worse last year, but to this year is going to be difficult too because there is now this new outbreak um, of this variance of the COVID, which seems to be hitting people as well. So we pray for you, pray that you're going to be safe, uh, pray that God will protect you and give you strength. Well, we want to share some scriptures with you today and encourage you in recovery. As you know, the Grace Recovery Church was started to help Christians in recovery from addiction, from codependency. And so we're here to encourage you and help you. If you need additional help, you can always contact us. Uh, let me give you some information on how to do that. You can, first of all, you can call us on the phone. Our phone number is 570, the area code, 568-8500. You can also email us at buffalo7 at ptd.net. That's good, another way to contact us. Write to us. Our uh, mailing address is 8 Lar Circle, L-A-H-R Circle, New Columbia, PA, 17856. You also can find us on the Internet. We, are, we have a Facebook page for Grace Recovery Church and Buffalo Valley Counseling, and my name, Dr. John Radke. You can also find us, and we have a website called buffalovalleychristiancounseling.com. So there's lots of different ways to contact us, and we can help you. Uh, right over the internet. Many times we can go into people's homes through Skype, through FaceTime, and we can give them counseling uh, over the airways, and they don't even have to leave their home. And I've had the privilege of doing that. So if you need help in any way, whether it's depression, anxiety, whether you're working on your addiction and you need a sponsor, someone to help you through difficult times, give us a call. We're here to help you. That's why we're here to encourage you. Uh, we also have a book that's for sale on uh, Amazon.com, and we have a number of children's books that I have written uh, for 
kids to help them in their life. But this is the recovery book that I've uh, made called The New Christian 12 Steps. It basically takes the Christian 12 Steps of AA, but it puts Jesus Christ as the higher power. And uh, we're going to read that in just a moment. But there's some wonderful tools in this book to show you how to work a daily devotional program in recovery and how you can work a program every day. So hope that you might look into that. You can find this on Amazon.com. There's my picture of my wife and I in the back cover. And uh, the cost, I believe, is only $7 plus shipping. Very inexpensive. Uh, inside the book, by the way, you can uh, it has information on how you can start your own uh, recovery group in your home or your church and how to lead that recovery group. So some inf great information on there, how to... How to Work a 12-Step Program Every Day is also in this book. And uh, some wonderful tools that will help you in your walk with the Lord in recovery. Well, God bless you. Let's pray. I think we ought to pray before we get started in the into our recovery work today. So let's do that. Let's bow for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you so much for the opportunity to meet on the airways with our friends and neighbors and those who are members of our church. We thank you, Father, for their lives. We pray for each and every one of them over this holiday that you would protect their families, first and foremost, from COVID and from any sickness and disease. We also pray that you'd prosper them with, their, with employment and a way to, that they can uh, take care of themselves and earn an, a living and be able to supply the needs for their family. We pray, Father, for their recovery also, those who are struggling with addiction those who really need the Lord Jesus Christ as a higher power in their life so they can have the strength and the power to overcome their addiction. And we thank you so much for that. We pray that you would just help them to find the Lord Jesus over the holidays, that they might be able to have the higher power in their life that they really need. Now, Lord, we pray that you'd guide us and direct us as we look at the Word of God and just make some assessments about recovery. Pray that you just give us a good time looking into the word and we ask that your Holy Spirit would fill us and that he would anoint us so that as we preach and share the word of God that we would be a blessing to the hearers. Now we thank you and ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, I'm going to be reading the 12 steps from our book today. So if you have one of these already, you can follow along on page 10 and let me read them out loud. It says, number one, I admit that I'm powerless over my addictions and codependencies and that it has made my daily life unhappy and unmanageable. Number two, I come to believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior and that he can restore my life to health and sanity. Number three, I've made a decision to turn my will and my life over to the care of Christ today and his will for me. Number four, I will make a searching and fearless moral inventory of myself now and throughout the day. Number five, I will admit to the Lord and myself and to another confidential person what I've done wrong today. Number six, I'll be willing and ready to have the Lord remove all my defects of character and sins as the Holy Spirit convicts me. Number seven, I will humbly ask the Lord to forgive my sins and will forgive myself even if I know I will repeat them. Number eight, I will make a list of all persons I have harmed and ask for their forgiveness. Number nine, I will make direct amends with those I have hurt or with those who have hurt me and practice biblical forgiveness except when to do so could injure or hurt the other person. Number 10, I will keep my focus throughout the day and when I'm wrong, I will promptly admit it. Number 11, I will seek through prayer, meditation, and surrender to improve my conscious contact with the Lord through the day praying for knowledge of God's will for me and the power to carry that out. Number 12, as I'm being spiritually and emotionally revived as a result of these steps, I will try to carry this message to other unhealthy people and will practice these principles in my daily walk. Let me read the serenity prayer. You're, you're, uh, I certainly will invite you to say it with me if you'd like. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change today the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen. Well, these this is just part of the 12-step, the New Christian 12-step recovery book, but as you can see, there's many, many wonderful tools. There's even some graphs in the back. I have a number of different charts 
that will help you. And uh, so we hope that you'll look into that if you don't have it. Also, I highly recommend if, you, in, if you're working a recovery program that you get a recovery Bible like I'm reading from today right here. It's called the Recovery Bible. And uh, you can see it right there, Life Recovery Bible. It's uh, in the New Living Translation. And a wonderful, wonderful Bible to use as a tool to help you in your recovery work at home. Well, today we're going to be looking at the Word of God, and we're going to be studying uh, a familiar scripture from Luke chapter 2. And we're going to be talking about the shepherds. You know the story when the angel of God came to the shepherds that were tending the sheep and announced the arrival of of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let's read, starting in Luke chapter 2, beginning with the 8th verse. Here's what the Word of God says. That night there were shepherds staying in the fields nearby, guarding their flocks of sheep. And suddenly an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terrified. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news that will bring great joy to all people. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born today in Bethlehem, the city of David. And you will recognize him by this sign. You will find the babe, uh, baby wrapped, uh, wrapped snugly in the strips of cloth lining uh, and lying in a manger. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of other uh, angels, the armies of heaven, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those with whom God is pleased. And when the angel had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Let us go to Bethlehem and let us see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They hurried to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in a manger. And after seeing him, the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. And all who heard the shepherd's story were astonished. But Mary kept all these things in her heart and thought about them often. The shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. What a great, great, great scripture. And, you know, if when you're reading this scripture, your first reaction is like, well, this is about Christmas. This is, a, this is the story of the birth of Jesus. This is the story of the shepherds, the part of the, uh, the nativity. But there's, there's some great truth here for you and I pertaining to our relationship with Jesus Christ and also uh, especially if we're in recovery. So let's go through this scripture again. I want to go through each verse and I want to just bring out some truths to you that I think are very important. So here we have, first of all, the, the, the introduction. It says, at night there were shepherds, and they were, uh, they were tending their sheep, guarding their flock, and they were just doing what they always did. So we want to see that, first of all, our text basically uh, defines these shepherds as just common, everyday, ordinary shepherds doing their job, minding their own business. It's nighttime. It's dark out. Uh, there's no activity going on. It's just them and the sheep and the stars and maybe the campfire to warm them at night. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, an angel of the Lord appeared to them. Now, we don't know who this angel was. The Bible says it was an angel of the Lord. So it could have been Gabriel. It could have been Michael. It could have been just some other assigned angel, but this angel was unique because he was brilliant, he was loud, and he had a message that he was going to share with these commoners, these, these men, 
uh, and they, something that was going to be change their life basically and make them different people. And uh, of course, the first thing that happened is the Bible says they were terrified. Well, of course you'd be terrified if you were sitting and you were standing out in a field in total darkness and all of a sudden this brilliant light showed in front of you and here it was an angel and this angel was actually speaking to you in an audible voice. Can you imagine? Uh, that would be a terrifying uh, experience for anyone. And so they were there and I'm sure they probably thought uh, this was a, uh, a vision. They thought it was uh, maybe their imagination. They weren't sure what it was at first but they, there was one thing that was 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 sure. They were ter the word terrified is the word that the Bible uses. Didn't say they were afraid. It says they were terrified. That means terrified is beyond being afraid. It's like they were literally shaking uh, uh, in fear because they had never seen anything like this. And of course, the angel tried to calm them right away. He assured them by saying, "Listen, don't be afraid. I'm not here to hurt you." I'm actually here to send a message to you from God. And so he says, I'm bringing you good news that will bring great joy to all people, not just you, but to all people. And, uh, he, and then he goes on and says what the message is. He says, I'm, I'm here to tell you that the Savior, yes, the Messiah, the, Mes the word Messiah. Now, these, these uh, shepherds probably were Jewish. And so they, they, they were looking for the Messiah. All the Jews believed in the Messiah. There was a Messiah that would come. But they thought it was going to be an earthly king, not a heavenly king, <clears throat> who would overcome the Roman Empire and take over the earth and be the king on the throne and uh, make the Jewish nation the greatest nation that ever existed. This is what the Jews believed the Messiah was all about. Of course, Jesus was not that type of Messiah. He came to give his life for the Jewish people and for all men, but he was not that kind of a king. He was, didn't come with a sword. He came with love and with the transforming power of the Holy Spirit. And so the Messiah, they said, is going to come, and he's, been, he's already been born. So they're saying he's been born. So that means that he has taken on a physical uh, fashion a physical body he was born in human form and they told him the city Bethlehem the city that was considered the city of David that's where David uh, the city of David where David came from his ancestry and you will recognize him by this sign he says listen here's how you'll know when you find him you'll find the baby wrapped in uh, swaddling clothes laying in a manger and of course there was also this star that pointed the way for the shepherds to follow. The star was a light that helped them and guided them to Bethlehem, which shined over the stable where Jesus was with Mary and Joseph. But here's what happened next. Then after this angel announces this, then suddenly, another suddenly. You know, uh, it isn't interesting in this passage, there's two suddenlies. There's a suddenly the angel of the Lord appeared, and then suddenly the angel was joined by a vast host of others. So these things didn't happen uh, gradually. It just happened suddenly like that. Another um, earth-shattering, terrifying event, I'm sure. Now the entire sky is filled with angels. The armies, it says, the armies of heaven, and they're praising God and they're singing. What? And they're singing one song in unison, one vast song. It says, glory to God in the highest heaven and peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. That's what they sang. Now, they might have sang it several times. They might have sang it once and sang it another and another. But they were singing and praising God because of the birth of this little boy. Now, the angel then returned, and all the other angels returned to heaven. And after they left, the, 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 the shepherds sat down at the campfire. They talked about this. And they said, we need to go see this thing. We need to go to Bethlehem. So they followed the star. They found where the baby was. And they worshipped him. And they left. They found Mary and Joseph. They worshipped the baby. And then they went and they proclaimed this to all kinds of people. It says they were, they were glorifying and praising God for they have heard 
well, all that they heard and seen, and that they were changed. So I wanted you to see something here. I want you to see the power, even in the birth of Jesus the baby, when he came into this world and the angels announced his arrival. It was so miraculous. It was so powerful that it changed these shepherds' lives. These men were just ordinary, everyday shepherds. Uh, being a shepherd of sheep in Jerusalem was not, not a very, uh, what do you say, it wasn't a very important job uh, as we would put it in society. Um, it, was, it was a job that was probably down lower on the totem pole of important jobs. And uh, so here were these men who were just regular, ordinary fellows who um, were minding their own business, tending their sheep, and their lives were instantly changed because of this angel and the angels who sang and the announcement that was made and the fact that Jesus was born and the Messiah came into the world and they saw this and they witnessed this. And because of it, their lives were totally changed. Perhaps these shepherds never went back to tending sheep. Perhaps they became disciples of Jesus. They became followers of Christ later on. And they proclaimed and continued to, to share this miracle that, that had happened to them. And, uh, and they, they testified of this. Now, let's, let's ask a very important question today, okay? As my friend Lon Solomon says in his church when he did this for many, many years in his church uh, uh, down in, in Washington, D.C., McLean Bible Church, he always used to stop in the sermon and he would say, okay, here we go. It's a very important question. That my entire congregation would say, one, two, three, and they go, so what? And so he would say, so what? Okay, what does this mean to me? How do we make an application? Well, the so what here is that the application is if Jesus can change and the birth of Jesus can change these ordinary shepherds and make them uh, completely different people, empower them, give them a message and a purpose and enlighten them, then think what Jesus can do for you. You see, if you would accept the Messiah, if you would hear this message, that Jesus has come into the world over Christmas. He's the Messiah. He's the Son of God. And he wants to come into your life. He wants you to believe in him. He wants you to receive him as your Lord and Savior, as your higher power. And when you do that, beloved, he will change you. He will miraculously change you. And he will give you the power and the ability to overcome sin and overcome your addictions. These men's lives were totally changed. I love this. It says when it says in the back and it says, but uh, it says the shepherds went back to their flocks, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen. It was just as the angel had told them. They were glorifying God. They, I don't think they ever stopped glorifying God. I think from that day forward, they continued to glorify God. And I think they were different men. They saw, they saw God. They saw heaven. And they were touched and their lives were changed. That's what Jesus wants to do for you. If you're struggling in addiction, you're struggling with alcoholism, sexual addiction, codependency, alcoholism, whatever it is, gambling. Jesus wants to change your life. He wants to take you right where you are. You don't have to change anything about yourself. He just wants you to hear the message. He wants you to hear the message. And what's the message? The message is glory to God in the highest and peace on earth to those whom God is pleased. God wants to have a relationship with you. And he sent a message to these shepherds that changed their lives. God is sending a message to you, beloved, today and saying, can I change your life? 
Will you let me in? Will you open the heart, your door to, door to your heart and let me in and save you so that you can have a higher power, so you can overcome your addiction, so you can have the ability to beat this horrible addiction, this chain, these chains that Satan has wrapped around you for years and years. You can break free and you can do that by letting the birth of Jesus Christ change you just like it changed these shepherds. Amen? Amen. Uh, so let's pray that prayer. Let's pray together. Father, pray that you would just change those who are listening to this message. Pray that they would hear the message of salvation, that Jesus came into the world as a little baby, and he was the Messiah of the world. He was the, the Savior of the world. He came here to die on the cross to save us from our sins so that he would be punished for our sins so that we wouldn't be punished. And he came into this world as a little infant baby, but when he came, it gave us great hope and joy because there was hope that we could be reunited with our Savior and our God and that we could have power in our lives and our lives would be changed and we would become like the shepherds, just regular shepherds, everyday shepherds. But now uh, they were just uh, men who were powerfully changed and had a message in their heart that was resonating every single day and they wanted to share it with everyone they saw. And that's what God can do for you. And I pray that you will invite Jesus into your heart right now. Just pray this prayer. Lord Jesus, I'm a sinner. I know I'm a sinner. I know I have addiction. I know I have things that are enchained in my life and keeping me a slave. But Lord, I surrender my life to you. Lord Jesus, please come into my heart. Come into my mind. Come into my body. Save me and make me a child of God. Give me the new birth. Help me, Lord, to experience this change, this power in my life so that I can overcome my addiction and I can become a new person in Christ, a new, a brand new person, and that you'll forgive me of all my sin and cast it in the deepest sea. Lord, I pray these things in Jesus' name. And Lord, I pray now that if there's one here that needs to do that, that they will do it today. And I pray that you'd help us, Lord, uh, to just to continue to keep uh, walking in sobriety and strength and we call upon the name of Jesus is our higher power to help us every day to overcome the temptations to addiction and I pray Lord that you would just do that for everyone listening today now we ask this in Jesus name amen well God bless you it's so good to be with you I'm thankful that I was able to share a few thoughts from the that precious passage from the word of God and I hope that you have uh, a, a life-changing experience this holiday season, this Christmas season, just like the shepherds' lives were totally changed, I pray that Jesus will totally change your life and make you uh, a brand spanking new person and that you can start over and you can, have, you can be a born-again Christian, a new person, have a new life. The Bible says, Behold, all things are passed away. Behold, all things are are becoming new. I pray that prayer for you and your family. Well, God bless you. Merry Christmas to you. Continue to pray for our ministry here and don't forget us. We won't forget you. We pray that you'll keep on keeping on in the Lord Jesus Christ, our higher power. God bless you.